Hey Yogi, welcome to class. If you're new to the channel, I'm Re. This is Drakey. Burley, another basset hound, is knocking around somewhere, so um, I'm not sure if she'll show up at some point. Um, and if you are returning, welcome back. We love practicing with you on YouTube. Before we jump into practice, as I always say, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do. It just helps us to grow our little place in the YouTube universe. Um, okay, so let's get on with practice. So I think two blocks today will be really handy. One, if you don't have two, um, but yeah, try to have two blocks. We're gonna use them a few times just to activate. Um, and with that being said, grab your block so it's near to you and come down onto your back. I'm actually gonna to come towards the top of my mat so I don't disturb Drake. Um, but you can be at the back of your mat and actually have both blocks handy if you have them. So have them nearby. Nice, and just come so that the feet go as wide as your mat and the knees knock in. Do anything you need to do so that you can kind of eliminate the fidget and eliminate the kind of brain that says, oh, I just need to move my t-shirt. I just need to change my bobble around. Oh, I just need to do this. So do all of those things so that you can just settle in here. We're just gonna take a few breaths just to arrive. Allow your shoulders to start to melt. Allow your arms, your hands to be a little bit heavy. Mark the start. Make this the starting point. Leaving whatever you have to do after this in the future and leaving whatever happened before this moment in the past and just center yourself in this very, very present moment. Mm, on the bottom of your next breath, slowly start to open the eyes if they were closed and draw your knees into your chest. Take your hands on tops of your kneecaps and then feel free to just start to move here any way that you want to. So maybe that's drawing the knees in together, away, apart and back in. Maybe it's moving in different directions. Maybe one knee is going one way and one the other. Just do whatever feels nice here. We just wanna start to lubricate the hips. You can flex, you can point the toes, whatever is calling you. Nice. And then from here, um, we're going to grab our blocks. So if you only have one block, don't put one under your head like I am. Keep it for in between your legs. If you have two blocks, we'll start actually on the left just so you can see me. If you have two blocks, then feel free to pop one under your head and then squeeze one in between the legs. Let the arms go out into a T and then let both knees fall over to the left. Um, and feel free to just shuffle around here, but we wanna kind of get the um, knees to come directly out of the hip socket. So you've got this nice 90 degree angle, and then you can just have the head there uh, on your block for a bit of support. Um, but you could use a blanket or you don't need to. I don't always have the second block, but it just can be nice. Then from here, that left palm is going to face up and reach the left fingertips away from you. As you inhale, sweep your right arm up. So really try and reach through the ceiling and then start to just send the right fingertips over and beyond, if possible, the left hand. If they don't reach beyond, then you're just reaching as far as they'll go. But we want to try and take them beyond the left. And from here, really squeeze your block. So don't allow the legs to just sort of hang. Make sure that you give them something to do, so squeeze your block. And then as you inhale, we're just going to sweep. So the fingertips are going to chase 
the mat or chase the earth and stay connected for as long as you can before you have to lift. Now, I am immediately pretty much having to lift because of the dog. Um, and I don't want to keep bothering him. So, um, but you can just keep your hands connected the whole time. And just notice if there's a point where you do have to lift the fingers, that's fine. You just want to gently open up the shoulder. Sorry, Drakey. <laughs> and just take a few of these circles here, allowing your shoulder just to get a bit lubricated, kind of like we did with the hips and the thigh bone. Now we're just working into that glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint. Nice, and when you've done that a few times, you're gonna flip sides. So you might need to scoot yourself over to your left, allow your legs to come, come down onto the right side. Maybe you move the block. I will actually move even further away from the mat, at the top of the mat. Um, so that I'm not hitting Drakey. Okay, so that right palm now reaches far away from your right palm is up. Then sweep the left arm up so that you can allow it to close left hand beyond your right fingers. And then we're going to sweep. And take it as far as you can before you feel like your knees are coming apart or lifting up from the earth. So if that means that at some point you lift the fingers away from the earth, that's absolutely fine. Just keep opening here, just gentle movement. Nice. Keep breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Nice, come back to center and then roll back on to your back. Move one block aside if you had two and keep one block with you. So from here, draw your right knee into your chest. Give it a nice squeeze, send the left leg long. And I like to flex the left toes here, again, just so that left leg does something. Um, so just keeping it fairly active. And then just start to move this right thigh bone, the top of the femur bone in the hip socket. So you're just moving it with your hand. You're just rolling it around, but you're really trying to get tight into the body here. So nice and tight. Cool. And then grab your block. You're going to pop your block um, kind of anywhere along the thigh so that you can squeeze the blocks. That might be really low to the thigh. You might be quite high. Um, if this is, you know, really easy, maybe grab some socks. Um, but you want to be able to pull back the knee towards the chest and squeeze onto the block. So have a go at that now, find a good spot. And then keeping that connected, we're gonna to start to open the leg. The leg doesn't need to straighten, the leg does need to squeeze the block, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So if you straighten the leg all the way but the block kind of comes loose, that's not the point of this. We really wanna to work to build a little bit of strength and a little bit of activity in this right hip flexor, the front of the hips. So we really do not need to straighten the right leg all the way. We're focusing way more on how much tension you can put right in between your low belly and the block and the thigh. So the most important thing here is the squeeze of the thigh in and not whether the leg goes straight. Take that out of your kind of consciousness is something because to be fair in yoga we always want you know we're always trying to go to end ranges or something we're not trying to lock this knee out keep lifting and lowering keep squeezing the block in if this doesn't feel like work maybe you need to take something smaller than the block and put it there because we do want this to feel like active work 
nice and on your next one just hold it as deeply as you can keep squeezing the block squeeze it in for ten nine eight seven six five four three two and release on one give that a little bit of a shake and then take the right leg long draw that left knee into the chest flex the right toes and again we're just going to roll around top of the thigh bone into the hip joint just to kind of find a little bit of passive compression so like the passive end range of motion and notice if the low back starts to really bear into the floor try to keep your back pretty neutral here so if you do have like one of those yoga bean bags like a little sand bag um, you could put that under your lumbar just to try to keep you honest. <laughs> but just notice if you do kind of come to this place where the back is completely flat to the mat, just try to alleviate a bit of that. We want the spine pretty neutral for this exercise. Nice. And then release that foot down just so that you can grab your block. You're going to squeeze your block in. So squeeze it in nice and tight. And then again, we're gonna straighten and bend. Keep squeezing the block. You'll get to a point where you're trying to straighten the knee and the block is most likely going to lose a little bit of that tightness to you. So keep, fight for that. Fight for that way more than the knee opening and closing. Fight for that real true squeeze of the thigh into the block. We just keep going here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then on one, try and straighten out, but keep the block squeezing, keep the block squeezing, hold it here for 5 four three two and on one release shake that out Whew. hopefully the hips now feel like you've woken them up a bit and then roll yourself up into dandasana so sit nice and tall have your sit bones grounded you're really going to strongly flex the feet the fingertips are just going to be to the outside of your hips here take an inhale reach your arms up as you exhale, we'll fold. And this is the first forward fold, so maybe bend your knees. Don't need to go crazy here. We're trying to just get into the hips, into the hamstrings. And then come all the way up. Nice. Take your blocks. We're going to put them on the sort of middle height so if that's the low mid and high we're kind of going to go for this middle place and you want to have your blocks take your legs a little bit wider um, we want to be able to lift the foot and go across the blocks okay so if when you lift the foot you are back here to do that then <clears throat> We're kind of escaping the work, yeah? So we really want to be like as up and over our hips as we can. We don't want to be sitting back and tucking the tailbone under because if we do that, we're not using the strength of our lower abs and we're not really using the hip flexors to move the leg. And we really do want to get that engagement. We want to get the hips fired up. So really try and sit tall. If that means you need to have your fingertips behind you to keep you honest, totally fine and if you need to pop a blanket underneath your sit bones that might help as well but ideally we want to be up and on top of ourselves so we, we don't want this sort of like tailbone tucking under we want to be neutral okay so we'll, we'll start with the left leg because this is how I've set up so I like to really strongly flex the toes for this and then you can do you can either have your hands behind you to help you lift in front of you to the middle but we're just going to do 10 so we're going to lift up and over both blocks so that's one two three four make sure they tap the foot taps down five and you're not rushing the motion 
as I found myself doing, six. Keep sitting up tall, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come back to the middle, nice. Take a deep inhale, reach your arms up as you exhale, fold. Notice if you feel like you can go a bit further on that left side. And then come back up. Nice. Rearrange your blocks. So take the left leg a little bit wider. So I like to have the left foot just off, well, nearly off the mat, because you really want to be able to like lift and lower with control. So we're not, we're not, it's not sort of like a bang, bang, um, sitting back and, because, you know, we can do this. We can do this all day. I'm not sure what it's going to work other than the quad. And most of us are quad dominant. So that's not what we're trying to do here. We're really trying to get deep within that hip bone and that hip socket. And we want those muscles to fire up and do the work for us as well as our lower abdomen. So set yourself up, flex your feet, sit tall, maybe fingers, maybe not. And then we're going to lift and lower, lift and lower. And we want this to be controlled. Keep pulling your right thigh bone back. So notice if it wants to shoot forward. Notice what the left leg is doing. Try to keep it active as much as you can. That's going to help square off your sit bones. I have no idea how many we've done. So let's go for another five, four, three, two, ooh, <laughs> and one. Nice. Remove the blocks. We are done with that, that torture for now. <laughs> Inhale, reach your arms up, flex your feet back towards your shin. As you exhale, we'll fold over. Pachimottanasana. You can take yogi toe lock. You can let the hands go by your side. Just looking to find a nice forward fold here and feel free to let the back round. Yeah. So we've kind of been sitting in neutral slash extension. So allow yourself to just find something that feels good here. And then inhale, roll yourself up. Take your hands behind you and have the fingers pointing out. We're going to point the toes down. We're going to lift into a reverse plank. So as you inhale, start to lift up, lift all the way up. See if the toes can touch the earth and just hold it here. Keep lifting the glutes. You can let the head go. We're here just for five, four, three, two, slowly. Lower on one. Goodness, I haven't done a reverse plank for Purvottanasana in Sanskrit for a while. That one feels intense. Okay, <laughs> from here, lean back, cross your ankles, just so you can come forward into a tabletop. We're not going to be hanging around on the floor for much longer. We just want to get some wrist warm up in before we start moving. So allow yourself to just circle over your wrists. Allow your spine, hips, head and neck to all get involved. Really grip your mat with your fingers. Nice job. Cool. And then from here, making sure your blocks are out of your way. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Find Ardha Mukha Svanasana. It might feel nice to just pedal the feet out here. Notice how your hips feel. Maybe this down dog feels, you know, maybe a little bit more open than usual at the start of the practice. Maybe it doesn't, <laughs> and that's totally fine. From here, right leg goes high, three leg dog. High onto the ball of your left toes. Draw the right knee in, bend the left knee so you can spring forward, right foot outside of right hand, drop the back knee, inhale, open up, take a twist, 
exhale right hand down tuck the back toes lift the hips start to work to straighten the legs they don't need to be straight we're just working our way there into this modified pyramid feel free to swing that foot open and close just loosening up through the hip there rebend the right knee gently step your left foot to the outside of that left hand. Deeply bend both knees, find an active squat, lift your chest. Exhale to stand. Inhale, reach your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, sink, sink the hips low, active squat. Hands to the mat on your inhale, bend your elbows, step your left foot back, step your right foot back. Downward facing dog, left leg high three leg dog high on the ball of your right toes bend the left knee in spring off the right leg left foot outside of left hand drop the back knee inhale to open and exhale let the left hand seek the mat inhale work to lift both hips high lifting the left toes up off the mat if that feels good coming into this modified pyramid and again from here if you want to open and close through that left hip you can and then rebend the left knee gently spring the right foot to the outside of that right hand inhale to an active squat exhale to stand inhale reach your arms up Urdhva Hastasana look up exhale to active squat inhale hands to the mat bend the elbows right foot goes back left foot goes back downward facing dog inhale roll through into a high plank pose and as you exhale half or full push-up drop knees drop forearms drag yourself along your mat into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana and then exhale Ardha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Nice. From here, look to the top of your mat. Lift heels, bend knees, step or jump feet to the outside of the hands. <laughs> Inhale, active squat. Exhale to stand. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, back down, active squat inhale hands to the mat bend your elbows if you want to jump straight into your push-up you can send the chest forward drop knees and forearms slide into up dog wave it back downward facing dog look forward lift heels bend knees step or jump feet to the outside of the hands inhale active squat exhale to stand inhale up to Urdhva Hastasana exhale down active squat inhale hands meet the mat send the chest forward bend the elbows take your push-up dropping knees and forearms coming into up dog and wave it back downward facing dog one more of these Lift heels, look forward, bend knees, step or jump the feet into active squat. Inhale, lift, exhale to stand. Inhale, reach up, look up, exhale, back down to active squat. Inhale, hands to the mat, step or jump to your push-up and your vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Nice, walk your feet, uh, your hands, sorry, back to your feet. Scoot your feet out wide, come into a low yogi squat, malasana. Take an inhale. As you exhale, fold, straighten the legs. Inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale to lift, lift your chest. Exhale to fold. Scoot your feet back together and walk the hands back out into downward facing dog. Seven count journey to the top of the mat, any way you want to get there. Set yourself up. We'll go for seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, feet land on one. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, root to rise, reach up, look up. Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, through to Samastiti here. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step your right foot back. Lower the back knee. From here, find your lizard lunge. So scoot your right toes out, plant your left hand, and then inhale, sweep up. See if you can catch the back foot here. If you can, kick into that hand, really open up through the right shoulder. If you want to, you can come down onto the forearm here, if that feels nice. Nice inhale, release slowly without catapulting, let the foot go back. Nice. And then from here, we'll come into our Ardha Hanumanasana half split. So straightening through that right leg. You can be up onto the fingertips here. Think about driving down through that right foot and pulling back. If you could see here, my right leg is shaking because there's that much activation there. Nice. Rebend that front knee. Square the hips off so that the feet are roughly in line with the hips and not in line with each other. Untuck the back toes. Setting up a Chandrasana lunge. So hands to the mat. As you inhale, lift that left knee. Make it buoyant. Squeeze your left glute. Stay here or rise up onto the thigh or reach the arms up. We're here for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Slowly lower on one. Nice. From here, you're going to scoot that right foot as far forward as it'll go. Tuck the left toes under. Come into a very wide leg lunge. So that right knee will not be kind of over the ankle. It's gonna be quite far back. Try to sit up tall here. Keep shaking that, oh, I'm, keep wiggling that left foot back and come into a long lunge. We'll be here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Slowly lower on one. Just enough so you can find your foot in. We're going to come back up this time to stand coming into an active split. So take the feet wide, come all the way up to stand, straightening through or working to straighten through both legs. Wriggle the foot back and then if you can you're going to lift the right toes off. You're here for ten, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, feel the wobbles. Three, two, rebend, slowly lower on one. Nice. From here, we'll go into something far more traditional Hanumanasana full split. So, see how this one feels. Maybe you want to pop a block underneath you for a bit of support. Try and sit nice and upright here. Try to square the hips off. And then slowly drag that foot back under you. Journey to the top of the mat, either coming into a standing split, so lifting the leg and holding it there, or we'll try and hop to the top. So you can take as many hops as you need to, that's cool. But we're just gonna hop up, so hands will plant, we'll lift up. Maybe we do one hop, maybe we do a few. Wherever we are, we're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and lower the feet 
on one. Come towards the top of the mat if you took the half split, um, sorry, the standing split because we want to go onto the other side, so we want to be at the top. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale to fold. Inhale, root to rise. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands through the center line. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Step your right foot back. Drop your right knee down and scoot that left foot over so you can come into your variation of lizard lunge. Inhale, left arm goes up and back, catches hold of that right foot. Ignore what I'm doing, my hair is in my face. And then you're gonna kick into that left hand with the right foot opening up. Again, on this side, if you wanna come down onto the forearm, that is totally cool. Feel the body open here. Keep kicking into that hand with the foot if you've got it. If you don't have it, keep driving the foot in towards your hand, really activating through the hamstring. Slowly release. Find your way into your half split. Ardha Hanumanasana, so straightening through that left leg. Think about really driving that left heel down and back. So imagine you're trying to drag the mat back into you. It's just gonna help you really activate through that left leg. And we get so much more from the stretches if we're active in them rather than passive. So think about pulling it back having some, some force in the action of pulling back. Nice. Bend the left knee, setting up for Chandrasana lunge on this side. So untuck your back toe so the top of the foot is flat to the mat. Make sure the right foot is going straight out of the hip, left foot out of the left hip. We don't want to be on the tightrope for this. And then from here, inhale, lift onto um, the top of that right foot, lift the right knee. Maybe stay here, that's a great place to be, or maybe you come up onto the hands, maybe you reach up. We're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and slowly lower on one. Scoot that left foot forward, coming back into that awful, I know it's awful, it's awful for me too, that really long lunge. It's just going to help us when we move into our splits. So scoot that right, left foot forward, keep the back toes tucked this time. We're going to come up into that low lunge. Find it, try and sit tall. Arms can do whatever they want. I like them up just to help me to not lean forward. Try to lean back. And we're here. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Take an inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. And exhale, slowly release. Just enough so that you can come back into that active split. So you know where you're going now. Maybe you want to take the stance a bit longer. That's cool. But you're going to come up, straighten through both legs as you reach up. Find yourself. And then maybe you lift the left toes up. Be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Slowly lower on one. Nice, and we'll come into that Hanumanasana again. So use whatever props you need. Listen to what your body wants rather than what you think you should be doing in this pose. Work for sensation over the aesthetic. So I find if I go really low to the floor, I open up through my hips and I don't get as much of a sensation in that right hip. Whereas if I stay a bit upright, use the block, I get a lot more out of it. So just notice the choices that you're making in Hanumanasana. 
You don't need to go to the mat to feel a good stretch here. Slowly release, bend that left knee in and bring your knees together onto the mat. Open the feet wide. Actually, make sure you've got space behind you and conscious of the sun and the dog. So open the feet, so the knees stay together, knees go out, uh, knees stay together, feet go out. We're gonna come down into a hero's pose, Vajrasana. So if this is super uncomfortable, then pop a block under the seat, yeah? If this is okay and you wanna come down, might feel nice to open up and lengthen through the hips after all of that kind of compression and extension. And you can come all the way down if that is your bag, your jam, your vibe. It's, it's a really weird day weather-wise. <laughs> um, it's one minute it's cloudy, the next minute it's streaming sunshine. So I'm either okay or I'm just boiling. <laughs> I hope you're having beautiful weather wherever you are in the world. Hmm. Let go. Let go of any of the tension that you've built up, that you've sought, that you've explored to find, let it go now. Slowly make your way all the way back up, back into your hero's pose. And then from here, swing the legs forward. We're gonna take a forward fold here just to see if this one feels any different from the first one. So pop a blanket under the sit bones if you like that for your forward folds. Inhale, reach your arms up and long. And exhale, Pachimottanasana. Fold deeply. Slowly. Come up, just so that you can bend your knees and roll down. Find your way onto your back for Shavasana. You could take the knees wide, soles of the feet together, Supta Vada Konasana if that is calling you, but know that whatever you take is just right. You're just looking to find some place of ease for you. Come back into that place of center. Come back into that place of grounding. And enjoy it. As always, I won't stay with you for this Shavasana for long. But I encourage you to stay for as long as you have. Stay in the present. The future is waiting. The past has been. Be here. As always, thank you for allowing me to be part of your practice today. I hope to see you on the mat soon. Thank you.